Brad Nessler back here on the show. How are you, Brad? Hey, Rich. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing fine. It's interesting. It's interesting to hear Nick Saban politic the people he was calling rat poison all year long. Huh, Brad? <laughs> well, That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, I know. Losses. Losses. One will... loss can do that to you. <laughs> That's right. What What do you think about what you have seen? You've seen Georgia. Georgia. You've seen Auburn. You've seen Alabama. You've seen Alabama versus Auburn. You've seen it all, right, Brad? You've called yep. it all in this. So if I had to give you uh, the 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 best team in the SEC gets to go right now, which one would you choose? I would choose Georgia, but they got to beat Auburn. I mean, Auburn's the hottest team right now. Obviously, you, when you beat two number ones in a two week span and one of your other losses was to the number one team. Now Clemson in a close game at Clemson. The other thing is just the, you know, the second half they fell apart against LSU and that was a punt return was the difference in that game. So their two losses are, are, you know, pretty strong. I, I give them that. And they're playing better than just about anybody right now. The balance they have, um, you know, pass run and their front four on defense is really good. And they've proven that against uh, two number one teams in a, in a three week span, which is pretty amazing. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's going to play itself out as far as Nick's comments. I think if Ohio state, um, if Wisconsin beats Ohio state, uh, they're in, obviously, I think if TCU, uh, or Ohio state, you know, beat the teams that are supposed to be there, then I think Alabama deserves a shot. So, you know, their one loss, uh, came against their arch rival, in you know um, a 12 point game after they were number one most of the year other than the time that georgia had it for two weeks so uh, i'll give you this alabama's first half of their season against lesser competition they were dominating when i had them the first two times i'm not sure they gave up any points i think it was 100 to 7 or something in the two games they did and i was like wow they're rolling but you know second half they hit stronger teams they hit some uh, adversity with especially at the linebacking core even Knicks teams that are that deep when you get down to your eighth linebacker and you're playing Mississippi State or wh whoever, um, it starts to show after a while. So it's interesting the way that you just gave the scenario is that Ohio State could be in Penn State's position last year with yeah. Alabama in the Ohio State role from that where the Big Ten champion doesn't go and a runner-up that didn't even play in a conference championship goes instead. And you think Alabama would, would get in that way over an Ohio State team that wins the Big Ten championship game? Why? Um, just, I guess, you know, I don't know what the committee thinks. And you know what? I've seen Ohio State, but I haven't seen them in person. So I don't really have the eye test to go by. Uh, you know, Ohio State got beat at home pretty badly by Oklahoma. They got throttled by Iowa at Kinnick Stadium. And I just don't see where... You know, I know they've beaten other good teams, but I just don't see where their resume is any better than Alabama's. I just don't see it. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm I'm not trying to be an SEC shill here. No. I just I've seen more of Alabama, and I you know I know when they play well how good they are. Now, are they better than Ohio State? That's the committee's problem. So, how have you seen Auburn grow as a team then? Um, you know, just from that second half of the LSU game, when I didn't think they coached very well and they made some mistakes. Um, Jared Stidham has really played well. I mean, he's the – there's only – I don't even know if there's a handful of guys in the SEC that are pro quarterback potential. Uh, maybe Drew Locke in Missouri, Stidham at Auburn. A lot of the other guys are college quarterbacks as far as I'm concerned. He's really come on and he's fit into what they do. Um, you know, they get chunk plays. He's got a great arm. Carry on Johnson is the key. I, I just don't know what's going to happen there. If he's healthy – then Auburn, I can see why they're favored. If he's not healthy, I don't see how Georgia isn't the favorite in the game, to be honest with you. But Stidham's been, I think, the biggest difference for them. They just, you know, going back to Cam Newton, they haven't had the Cam Newton and Nick Marshall years were a different kind of quarterback, even though Stidham, you know, ran for a touchdown last week. And he ran for a touchdown against Georgia the first time. He's he's not run first option, and there's not a lot of RPOs in their deal. He just knows how to run their system. And uh He's doing it at a really high level right now. Inside a report, a Honda Insider report with uh, Brad Nestler calling the SEC championship game on CBS this coming weekend. What, what you know, it's interesting. Uh, we had this conversation yesterday. A lot of folks had uh, had opinions on either side. I think there should be eight teams in um, uh, because it would it it certainly would not lessen the importance of the game that you're calling right now, or lessen right. the importance of the game you called last weekend. 
that that all Alabama, however, would be sitting back here knowing they're in the they're in the final eight. That that's the only drawback is it a team that could lose its last game, just chill out and watch two others beat the crap out of each other. However, <laughs> if you make the fact that Alabama now would have to play a road game at the home game of one of the top four seeds, now now they've got a lot of skin in the game still to keep keep going for a regular season uh, uh, that's undefeated. Where do you stand on the subject of, of these college football playoffs, Brad? I would love, you know, I would love to see it. I always kept saying, I don't think I would see an eight or more playoff team in my broadcast career. I'm going to see it in my lifetime. Am I going to see it in my broadcast career? I don't know. I think they got to play this first cycle out. You know, they've set themselves up to make sure that everybody, the cities and the bowls all get their shot at being the big game. You know, this year it's a Mercedes Benz stadium here in Atlanta. Um, I think once the whole cycle runs through, I think they'll rethink it. And, you know, it's just more money and more money and more money and, and they'll get that. But I don't know that it'll make it all the way to the end of what their contract is. But I think once everybody gets the big game, uh, there'll be more pressure to, to uh, go to an 18 deal. Brad, have a great broadcast this weekend. Thanks for calling in. Really appreciate it. All right, brother. Good talking to you. Same to you, Brad Nestler. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.